inside this box I just got in the mail is the Kirkland Signature Driver, and I can't tell you how long I have waited for this club. Over a year of me scrolling the Costco website, continually refreshing, my thumb hurts from refreshing so much to see if this driver would drop. It finally dropped at like 5.58 a.m. yesterday. I was just randomly woke up early and there it was. I think I was one of the first people to buy it. On today's video, we're gonna unbox this driver and I'm gonna give you my initial review from here inside my simulator studio. Oh, before I tear this open, a gentle reminder to hit subscribe because we're getting things first here on Let's Play Through. If you wanna be a part of that, be a part of the discussion and see all the latest and greatest here in 2024 that's coming out, you're gonna to wanna to stay tuned to this channel. All right, let's get her open. Now, if the clothes I'm wearing look familiar to you, it's because I just shot the Kirkland Signature Irons video earlier this morning, and I will leave a link down below to that one, but you've got to check those out too. It's just been a crazy day. I literally haven't slept, it seems like, in probably 24 hours. It's been insane. And here we go. <laughs> Very similar, if you saw the Irons box, I'll pull that out in a second. This is pretty much the matching box to that one. Let's take a look at this together. What I like right there is you've got carbon fiber look to the top of this thing. You can see that this is an adjustable driver. We're going to talk about how this driver can be adjusted. So that's huge because so many drivers in this price point, $199 online, maybe even cheaper in store. But at $199, most drivers don't have an adjustable hosel. And this one is fairly good looking from what I can tell. You can see they call it a high inertia shape. Turning it over to see some of the details here, you've got a composite crown, a four point adjustable hosel, titanium alloy face, and you've got the alloy weight screw. I assume at some point you could change this screw out. I don't know if Kirkland will sell them or if you have to go to a golf store or golf works or something to buy one, but that can be changed it looks like. Here's the shaft. The shaft is an even flow rip tide. I've, I reviewed this shaft on, I think the Wilson drivers from a year ago. It comes with a head cover and it comes with the adjustment tool. That's what's in the box. Now let's open it. Gotta say Kirkland did a good job branding all their stuff because it all matches now. The irons, the wedges and the putter all look very similar. Here we go. There's the first look at it. It's in a nicely packaged container, similar to the irons. This is not cheap. They've got a couple of pieces of foam. There's even one there in mid shaft. So they did a good job here with the packaging and looks premium, much more premium than I would think. I guess I just got to rip it open. There we go. There is our tool in this nice little Ziploc bag. So many manufacturers do not include this anymore. And it's got the Kirkland Signature logo there on top. It even has a little holder so you're not scratching other things in your bag. But this is what you came to see. Here's the driver. Oh, I'm making a mess of it. This is like my kids at Christmas, literally just tearing into their presents. I took so much time to wrap it nicely and they're just tearing into it. Okay, got it. <laughs> there we go. There you see the even flow riptide shaft. This is what looks like 60 grams and stiff. They have a regular and a stiff. That's what they've got. Here's the head cover. Gotta say it's decent quality actually, but that logo, that logo is so ugly. We're gonna change that for a Let's Play through head cover. That looks much better. <laughs> All right, but honestly, it's got the same carbon fiber look to it. It looks like it's decent durable material. It's not junk, so cool that they included that, but I will be switching to mine. There you go. There's the driver. You can see the adjustability built into the shaft here. It's got the same grip as what's on their iron, so it'll all match. That's the Lambkin cross line. And yeah, just like the irons, it feels a little bit more like a medium sized grip. It's definitely not thin. Oh, I love that sound. Here you go. 10 and a half degrees, which is a great kind of middle of the road loft for most golfers. Look at the carbon fiber there. Beautiful carbon fiber. Nice shape. It's a little bit more elongated there towards the back of the club. So it's not quite a half moon. It's more elongated, more triangular almost. The face of this club, as you can see, it's not super long from right to left or the width of this club, but it is nice and deep. 
I like that because whereas I hit a lot of drivers here, my miss is generally down in here, a little low on the face. So I like a deeper driver myself. But uh, if you tend to miss off the toe or heel, you're gonna not have quite as much room there to miss. One thing I actually like here is there's a little dot there, a little aim point on the top of this driver in silver. I kind of like the look at that. So here's what it'll look like to you, looking down at a dress. It's really nice, it's clean, I really like that. I feel like the logo is a better size here on the driver than it was on the irons. It was just so big. There's your weight back there. Uh, again, no other weights included in the box. And again, their tool will just kind of fit in here and you can adjust the lofts. Actually, let's take a look at that really quick before I start swinging this club. A few turns and we can loosen this baby up a little bit, enough to move it around. You can see it can slide right out of there. If you can see it here on the tip, you've got 10 and a half draw biased. You've got minus one degree. You've got 10 and a half, this is standard or neutral and then you've got plus one degree. So I like that it's a full degree. So many drivers are these weird fractions. This is nice that it's one full degree up or down. I'm gonna leave this at the standard 10 and a half. It's what it comes like out of the box. I play a draw already. I naturally draw the ball. But if you're a person who is struggling with a slice, you may wanna change it to that 10 and a half draw setting. We're gonna tighten this baby up. And what you wanna do if you do make some changes, you wanna hear two clicks like that. Now we're ready to give this a few swings and see how she performs. All right, finally time to take some swings with the Kirkland Signature Driver. This is an exciting moment. Looking down at it, like I said when I unbox it, it's a big looking head. It looks like it will be very forgiving. The shaft flex, it doesn't seem super stiff. I would say it's closer to a regular than it is to a stiff. And I've noticed that with other even flow shafts. Let's see how she performs though. All right, first one was a little bit towards the toe. We rolled out to 244. Clubbing speed was 99, ball speed was 141. That's really good. The backspin kind of low at 1738. Carried 217, total distance, like I said, 244. And that one wasn't in the middle for sure. Now, I will say that was a nice sound. That was a pleasant surprise there because it was pretty thuddy. And I thought maybe with a cheap driver, it would be that tingy sound. It wasn't that at all. And pretty forgiving result for where I hit that on the club face, I think. Shot two. Well, that's much better. Although it's fading just a little bit. It'd be right side of the fairway. But better strike there for sure. And you can see the distance. The distance looks pretty decent there. Club head speed, 98. Ball speed was 139. The backspin was a little higher there, 1831. Carried 232, total 258. Not a bad strike at all there. If we can do the same thing, we put a little baby draw on it. That's what I'm trying to do. Kind of like that. Oh yeah. That was really nice. Look at that. It almost hit the middle line there. It rolled out there a good ways to 267. That's our best so far. Club head speed was up a mile per hour at 99. Ball speed 142. That's a very good number for me at 99 mile per hour club head speed. Again, the backspin seems to be a little on the low side. I like to be around 2021, maybe 2200 RPM. That one was 1764. Carried a nice 239 and rolled out to 264. So that lower spin is gonna give us more rollout. And by the way, this simulator is set to sea level, just like where I live here in Florida. There's no extra rollout settings, anything like that. I've just got it stock out of the box. This is the GC Quad from playbetter.com. I'll leave a link below. If you want the best stats, GC Quad is the way to go. Here we go, next shot. Oh, I feel like I'm starting to dial this thing in. I love that little baby draw. That's exactly the trajectory in the ball flight that I like to see. This is performing better than I could ever have hoped for, to be quite honest with you. It's really good. Checking the stats there, club head speed 99, ball speed 140, backspin low though, 1679. So this is a low spinning driver, no doubt. Carry 234, total 263. We're going to look at peak height and everything once we really break down the stats, but... Uh, yeah, I like what I see so far. Last swing, and then we're going to look at everything. 
A little lower trajectory. My clubhead speed was probably down a little bit there. We'll find out. Not a bad result though. Not a bad result at all. That's in the middle of the fairway, guys, or it's at least left side of the fairway. Clubhead speed 97, ball speed 139. So yeah, just like I felt, the clubhead speed was a little bit down there. Maybe that's some of the adrenaline wearing off of opening this driver. Backspin really low, 1172. The carry was 207, the total was 242. Let's go dive a little deeper into the stats. We're gonna look at the table here. I always like to first take a look at club head speed on average, it was 98.3. I had that couple there a little on the low side, but pretty consistent overall. The efficiency, that's the smash factor, is 1.43. 1.43, especially on this shot right here, seems like it wasn't as efficient as it could be. I'm just letting you know what I'm seeing here, but I'd like to see that number a little bit higher. All in all, though, the results seem to be pretty good. Ball speed, on average, 140.2, leaving the club. The launch angle, 11.5 degrees. Side angle, 2.8 degrees right. Total spin, one of the lowest drivers I've looked at all year, 1708. The spin axis, 13.3 degrees. The descent angle, 26.4 degrees. Here's my dispersion here. My standard deviation there, 13 yards. So fairly tight, it's not bad. Those first and last shots probably being the worst ones as you saw on screen in terms of dispersion. Peak height, 19 yards. Again, the 23 is sort of where I'd like to be. That looked about perfect to me. Overall though, with that first and fifth shot, I averaged 19. My carry was 226, I'll take that. My total was 254. Again, these numbers not jacked or anything like that. Now, let's just quickly look at the dispersion map itself. Fairly tight, I did have that one, that first one I hit a little right, and then everything started to kind of be more my natural, which is a little left to center with those two really good ones in the middle. Not super, super amazingly tight, but fairly tight. Now, so many people have compared the Kirkland Signature Driver to the Titleist. I've got the TSR3 here, which I think is the best driver of the year. Most likely, with that elongated shape, I would say this is closest to a TSR4, but I've got the TSR3 here so we can test which driver here comes out on top. And if you want to get another look at the face there, again, you can see how similar they are. Again, very deep faces on both of these drivers. You have even more adjustability here on the Titleist than you do there on the $199 Kirkland Signature driver. And here you've got a sliding weight as well on this particular model, whereas here you've just got a weight. So yeah, I mean by eye, they're close. They're close. I actually like the finish of this all black here rather than the carbon fiber look myself, but they're very, very close. I'm gonna hit a few shots with this and then we'll compare the stats. <laughs> Very similar to my first swing with the Kirkland Signature. Club head speed was 99. Ball speed 135. Didn't quite hit that off the middle. Carried 223. You can see the spin is much higher there, 2556. And the total there, 244. Didn't catch it in the middle though. <laughs> that was kind of similar to my last swing, I'd say, with the Kirkland Signature, lower and heading a little left. And yeah, club head speed is exactly the same as that swing, 97, ball speed 137, backspin low, 1352, carried 204, total 243. If we can get three in the middle, we'll have a real good apples to apples. I'd say that's like my second shot very similar to the second shot. So we've got three real good apples to apples. There, club head speed 99, ball speed 139, backspin 1542, which is lower than I would guess. Carry 235, total 265. Smash 141 too, by the way. Maybe these are closer than I thought. It's another good one. I'd say that was pretty well centerly struck. Is that even a word, centerly? <laughs> it was st struck pretty well in the center there. That's my best result so far. Club end speed actually was down, 97, ball speed 142. That's what happens when you hit him in the center because my efficiency there is at 1.46. Backspin, 1709, carry 236, total 269. Wow, these stats are much closer than I thought. Guys, I think <laughs> those are about as five close of drives as I could possibly come up with. Let's check the stats here on this last TSR3. We've got a club head speed 98, ball speed 143, 
Backspin 1903, it's a little better. Carried 231, total 258. And yeah, that's as close as I could possibly get five swings and it just kind of happened that way. But one we pushed a little bit, one was a little slower swing that kind of went left on us. The other three were great on both drivers. So this is about as good as an apples to apples as I can give you. Let's take a look at the side-by-side -side stats here. This is so much closer than I thought. All right, first off the bat, club head speed was very similar. 98.3 with the Kirkland Signature to 98.1 with the Titleist. So again, that's as consistent as I can get two swings. Now what's interesting here is that we had that one really nice center struck hit and we had this one here but these ones kind of brought our average down and all told 1.42 smash factor versus 1.43 with the kirkland signature that's really interesting so with that slightly increased swing speed i would say these are really close in terms of ball speed and the titleist is the best driver i saw all of 2023 for sure in terms of launch angle, exactly the same, 11.5. In terms of spin, we are getting a little better spin here with the TSR3. 1,831 RPMs to our 1,708, so about 125 RPMs, give or take there. In terms of the offline dispersion, this is really interesting. They're exactly the same, 13. Like I said, those swings were so similar. Sometimes you just get lucky making videos, and I did this time. In terms of peak height, as I thought, the Titleist is a little bit better overall. Now we had that one really high shot there, that first shot at 30 yards peak height, but we also had a 13. Overall, I'd say 20 is pretty spot on there. In terms of carry, exactly the same. 226 yards for both of these drivers. And the Titleist did beat it with a little extra rollout. That's interesting since the spin was different, but I assume it's that launch angle and that descent angle adding to a little bit more rollout here with the Titleist, but exactly the same carry, and that's pretty, pretty darn incredible. So wow, some pretty shocking results there. TSR3 is my driver of 2023, and this one is right there knocking at the door, if not better in a couple of those categories, with a shaft that is not fitted to me, by the way. This is just randomly off the Costco shelf or off the Costco website, if you will, whereas my TSR3 has that counterbalance hazardous shaft I love. So man, that is so, so surprising. I think for your average golfer, this driver is going to be a fantastic choice as long as this shaft works for you. That's going to be the X factor, of course. And there's such limited shaft options with the stiff and regular being the only two offered right now. Also, I'm hoping we get to see a left-handed version of this club, which I think we will, as well as maybe a senior flex, maybe even a ladies club. That would be really nice to see. But for $199, it is hard Hard to argue with those numbers that we're seeing behind me. Make sure you are subscribed to Let's Play Through, and I'll catch you back here real soon on another edition of Let's Play Through.